The Ben Heck Show is brought to you by Element 14, the electronic design community and online store built for engineers and hobbyists alike. Join now and browse the store at element14.com. Attention hobbyists, are you tired of waiting for your hot glue gun to get hot? It takes forever. Oh man, look at those uneven extrusions. That won't pass for muster. And of course there's a dripping problem. That's money down the drain. Well, don't worry. Today, we're going to build a great glue gun that will solve these problems and more. Amazing builds, exclusive mods, cutting edge ideas, electronics, engineering, and more. Every week on Element 14's The Ben Heck Show. Here are some of the features that I would like to see on a glue gun. Some sort of motorized extrusion. I mean, obviously pulling the trigger is okay, but if it was controlled, you could draw out a single line of glue and you wouldn't have those glue, glue, glue clumps every so often. I think that'd be really cool. It's like if you were using fabric, you could make a single long line and it would be the same thickness all the way through. An analog speed control. Uh, we'll probably test it out using a shoulder button from an Xbox 360 controller. You know, how far you pull the trigger is how fast it goes. Just like a racing video game. Man, everything with me goes to video games. And the third one is retraction to avoid seepage. When you have a glue gun sitting on a table, they just leak out all their glue and it's really annoying because not only does it muck up your table, but it wastes glue. So my thought is make it like a 3D printer. After you release the trigger, it actually retracts the glue stick a little bit so there's less chance of seepage. 3D printers do that so that when they move the head around, it's not dragging excess plastic. So I have two drawings here, basically a top view and a side view of what I would put in the glue gun. Uh, there's a heating element that'll be a standard one pulled from a regular small glue gun. I'm gonna have some sort of drive gear and uh, a way to push pressure against the drive gear. That's gonna be the toughest part of the project. We'll be working on that over the two episodes. So on the side view, we can see a thermistor that'll tell us how hot the uh, head is. We won't let it extrude unless it's the right heat. A gear motor, which is basically a DC motor with a gearbox attached to it, like this one which gives you more torque. We've used them before on the show. There'll be a microcontroller, which will read the analog trigger and send PWM pulses to the motor. There'll be a motor driver that'll run off 12 volts, which means we need an AC to DC adapter, which will take the AC current from the mains, as Dave Jones would say, knocks it down to 12 volts. So that 12 volts is used to drive the motor. Then we'll also take that through another regulator to drop it down to five volts for the microcontroller. And there's a SSR, solid state relay heat control, kind of like our infrawave oven. The microcontroller will sense the temperature of the you know, hot end, and then it will use a solid state relay to turn on or off the hot end, depending on how hot it is. So if it's not hot enough, it'll pulse it back on. So we need a solid state relay for that. Uh, we actually have a really small one that should fit inside of a glue gun case. So what we're gonna do in this episode is get the electronics ready, show you how they work, and then start on the extrusion device. All right, I have some parts ready here. I'm going to solder them together and then show you how they all work. I've got all the parts wired up. Let's go over them. This is a Xbox 360 analog trigger. This basically gives us an analog reading, which we can read with the ADC and the microcontroller and figure out how fast to go. We have my microcontroller package. We used a few of these in season three. This is basically a little AVR board that I built. Over here, we have a motor driver. It uh, basically takes the 12 volts and drives the motor. Uh, we have to pulse the motor driver. The motor driver doesn't do the PWM, but the microcontroller can do that. This is basically our indicator LED. This tells us if we're at temperature or heating up. Right now, I'll just override it with our control here. This is the temperature control, how hot the hot end will get. I don't have that right here, but it will be. This is a very small package solid state relay. Um, this is turned on or off via the microcontroller. We can actually pass the, um, the hot end of the alternating current through this and turn our hot end on and off using this little relay. For here, we have a thermistor. Thermistor basically changes resistance based off temperature. So if we bolt this to the side of the hot end, we can see what temperature it is and control it. So it's very much like the extruder head on a 3D printer. And like a 3D printer, we want it to retract. So when I pull the trigger here, I see the speed of the motor. Okay, and then the trick is when I let go, it goes back a little bit, it retracts. And what that will hopefully do is avoid all the leakage. I have it cleaned up pretty good, but see this spot on my desk? 
where it's all worn away. That's from all the times glue leaks out, piles up, and then I have to scrape it off with a paint scraper. So yeah, it's kind of a waste and it's annoying. So hopefully this glue gun will solve that problem. Now that we have the electronics pretty much hashed out, the big problem will be the extruder element, like how to grip the stick with this and drive it through the hot end. That's gonna be the real challenge and we'll get started on that right now. The big thing now is how to extrude the glue. We have to push the glue stick through the hot end. It's gonna be kind of like making the extruder on a 3D printer, but of course the glue is larger and it's gonna take more force. I'm going to try two different ways. Here is a DC gear motor. Gear motor is just a motor that comes with the gearbox on it. We've experimented with these a little bit. They work, but I don't know if it has quite enough torque. The other thing is to take a cheap hand drill like this. This is just meant to have bits on the end. Take it apart and get its planetary gear system out of it. Planetary gear system gives you a lot of torque in a small package. And unlike, you know, gears meshing like this to take up space, planetary gear system stays on center. See, it's called planetary because it moves around like the planets. You drive it in the center and then each stage drives, well, there's two stages in succession on this one. So originally the bit would fit right here and that's what would drive at the end. I wanna replace that with this. I made this adapter that will fit in and then this bolt will lock in using its hex head. There we go. And then this will go on the end like Oh, wait, there we go. like that. And what we can do is we can cut grooves into this with a Dremel and make it a hobbed bolt, which is what uh, 3D printer makers call it. So we'll actually use these threads here to make our gripping surface and see if we can use that to drive the glue stick. Now it's time for a tech timeout. For today's tech timeout, we're going to be talking about pulse width modulation or PWM, which is something we're using to control the motor on today's project. We're using an integrated circuit to drive our motor, but that still requires external pulses in order to drive it. What the integrated motor driver does is just control the high power current going to the motor. So we need to send it some pulses of different widths, pulse width modulation. So by having wider pulses, it will make the motor go faster. By having shorter pulses, it will go slower. Pulse width modulation is also used to make dimming LEDs, uh, outdoor signage displays. It's not changing the voltage, it's changing the frequency at which it's given voltage. Pulse width modulation. Get dev kits fast. Element 14, your dev kit HQ. Today's viewer question is, what kind of battery pack did you use in the Raspberry Pi portable episode? That was a lithium polymer pack, which consisted of two 3.7 volt cells. So it was sold as a 7.4 volt pack. In that situation, the two cells were in series to give us a higher voltage. In your cell phone, for instance, there's usually a single 3.7 volt cell, which can be boosted to higher voltages using electronics. When working with lithium polymers, always be sure to use the correct charging method to avoid damage. When you're working on a project, especially one that might have a deadline of some kind, you know, even if it's like a deadline for yourself, like I want to get this done by Christmas or whatever, uh, I would suggest thinking about the most difficult thing first. In this case, it's the extruder and uh, you work on that first. This project, the electronics are fairly straightforward. It's the extruder that might give us trouble. So we actually started working on ideas for this even before we started filming the episode because we knew this was going to be the bugbear. So when I turn it manually, it takes a lot more force. So that tells me that the, you know, gearing is in effect. Oh, there we go. Yeah, first Buffalo Wild Wings. Now this whole day is spent with my hands covered with crap. There we go. Hmm, it's got a little slop. We might need to print a shim that goes in here, kind of keep it centered. See that? 
but we can see if we can power it up. Kid tested, mother approved. I shouldn't stick my fingers in this. <sighs> What's a good way to test? I need to shim this before I move any f further. So I'm gonna 3D print another little part and then I'll do the next thing. I've got a spacer in here now, which keeps the shaft pretty straight. So now I'm gonna attach this piece that I've made. And these are kind of uh, temporary pieces. I don't want to design too much until I know that it's going to work. The idea here is we're going to bolt this into or onto the motor, okay? And then we're going to try using an arm to pinch the uh, idler wheel onto the glue stick. A long time ago we did a portable 3D printer and to save space I made a custom extruder for it. That's actually kind of how the clamp worked on that one. So we'll see if that works. So here's the arm, I 3D printed it. Has a skate bearing here. I don't have the right length of screw, but this will work for now. And then what'll happen is the glue stick will load through here. Oh, this glue stick's kind of torn up. Oh, I should have made a bigger groove for that. Son of a biscuit. The glue stick will load through here and I'll be pinched by these wheels and this will clip onto something but to do a demonstration, we'll just hold this manually. Again, this isn't really the right way to do it, but it's just a proof of concept. So this will grip, there's a stick. You'll load it like this. Well, you really only have to load it once because you just continually put glue sticks through it. But then this, this wheel, you know, so this is a lever. And by putting the bearing here close to the fulcrum point of the lever, this part here applies a lot of force to it. And this will clip onto something. Again, we're not gonna build that until we know this is solid. Yeah, that's in there pretty good. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna kind of mock this up. We have a glue gun barrel bolted to the table here, so we're gonna see if this will extrude. So Allison is gonna help me. Um, we're not gonna hook this up to the PWM driver for now. We're just gonna hook up to this simple drill. We just need to know that it's going to push the glue through. That's all we're looking for today. Oh, I need to hook this up. Duh. See which way is forward. Okay, so it's gonna be the lower position you're gonna hit and just, and tap it like you did before. Okay, I'm gonna squeeze this in place just ahead of the uh, silicon tube. Okay, tap it. Tap it. Tap it. Tap it. Yeah, but yeah, it seems like it squirts out the glue pretty good. We're gonna waste like cents upon cents of hot glue building this project. To recap, we tested out a PWM motor drive system that'll give us precise control. And then we also made an extrusion type that we believe will work. So we're gonna use this to pinch the glue and keep it tight against this hob bolt that we made on this planetary gear system. So now that we know the theory works in the next episode, we can actually build the glue gun around it to make an actual real looking device. Uh, what this demonstrates is how it's important to test your theories out first before you get too far. If the extruder didn't work, the whole project would be sunk. So we made sure this worked before we moved on to anything else. You don't wanna have everything all nice and neat and ready to go and then discover that some critical part is not going to work. So always test things one idea at a time. Whoa, don't be so rash there, Buster. We'll be back next week with the conclusion of The Great Glue Gun.
The Ben Heck Show is brought to you by Element 14, the electronic design community and online store built for engineers and hobbyists alike. Join now and browse the store at element14.com.